oh, actually, Daniel, let's go ahead and start because it's the top sure. of the hour. And just want to yes. welcome everyone to our uh, one of our last presentations of OCA Days on Friday. We're going to be uh, hearing today from Daniel Reese, who, of course, is a vice president of the ODU Community Association. Daniel is the managing director of open source integrators covering all of Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and uh, Asian projects for the company. And grateful to have Daniel joining us because, of course, we all know Daniel as the author of many books on development, the Odoo Development Essentials, Odoo Developers Cookbook. Before that, uh, Daniel worked for Securitas for eight years in which, very cleverly, whenever they, as many enterprises do, you always have people that are users saying, I need this, I need that, and going out and buying a bunch of best-of-breed software. And instead of doing that, uh, Daniel was able to use Odoo as a platform to solve many of those business problems with great functionality and in, in custom development that he did. Also has a background uh, in, in professional services, having worked at Capgemini before and so for many years and is a, just an excellent technical and, and functional consultant in Odoo. So Daniel, thank you for talking about the incredible legacy, the odyssey that you went through to develop the version 13 Avatax connector. Can't wait to hear about that. Thank you for the introduction, Rich. And our, my topic for this talk is about taxes and tax compliance. So we've been working on an, a connector to an online service that um, is able to take care for you all the complexities of taxes. And this connector is right now contributed and available in the OCA. And it's uh, it's already doing a lot of great things, and we still we I think it has potential to do even more. And my last slide is about the roadmap and how you can collabor collaborate around that. So, and I, I'm excited to show you what we have and what 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 it's available now. So, um, so our agenda for today is first I would like to discuss on what's problem are we solving? So we're talking about taxes, we already know that, but exactly where is the complexity in taxes? Isn't just enough to do some configurations in Nodu and we're done with it? Um, not quite. So I'll explain you quite some scenarios where taxes get uh, very complicated. And Avatax uh, is a possible solution for this problem, of course. It may not be the only. Uh, it's still good for you to be aware of this option and identify for the scenarios you have, for the use cases you have, if it's an appropriate solution or not. Uh, I'll go through a live demo, so I'll just do a short walkthrough on how it looks like and how it's the look and feel of this in Odoo. And I'll share a roadmap and I'll be open to uh, questions and answers. Uh, so, what problem are we solving? So, this is uh, uh, taxes. Taxes are hard, right? Nobody likes taxes, not only because you need to pay them, but because, because they're not simple, they're complex. Uh, but worse than more complex than taxes are cross jurisdiction taxes. And um, for example, uh, you sometimes don't have a simple relation between a buyer and a seller. Uh, it can happen that you might have a triangle operation with a shipper in the middle. So then the place where the, the merchandise is, is uh, shipped from or shipped to or the place where the buyer is based or where the seller is based, all these can be relevant for accurately computing taxes. And again, um, this is not so simple because this is, this is not homogenous around different countries, around different states, even inside, the, uh, even on different regions of the same country. Uh, so the United States is a federation and each state has their own tax regulations and they vary a lot. They are very different. So it's next to impossible to someone selling to the whole US market to keep track of all the uh, tax regulations, specific tax regulations on each state and on each county. And even if they didn't change, this would be already hard. 
but they they continually change so these regulations are not frozen in time and they change from time to time there are thresholds and nexus and a lot of known uh for non-specialists it's overwhelming so um i'm european based and i began implementing this for specifically the u.s market and i had this idea that the taxes in the u.s were so much simpler and when it comes to companies business to business that's probably true a lot of business to business relations are tax exempt but when it comes to business to consumer, it's not that simple because for business to consumer, taxes are probably even more complex than EU VAT. So for people from European Union listening to me, they're probably concerned with VAT because VAT inside the EU is not trivial. Inside the same country, you can have, so like in the US, each country has its own tax regulations. And inside each country, you might have regions with different tax conditions. And depending on the kind of product, the same kind of product might have lower VAT rates in one country and not in the other. Uh, for example, in my country, in Portugal, we have at least three areas with different VAT taxes. So the, the mainland has the uh, tax, uh, tax rate, the islands of the Azores have a different tax rate, and the Madeira have different tax rate. And I know that in Spain, the same happens. And I'm, I'm very sure there's a lot of other countries where similar things happen. And um, so this is not trivial for the EU, it's, it's not trivial for the US. Um, uh, for the US, there's another complication is that, so I, I said before that basically business to business relations are tax exempt. The US does not have VAT, but they do have a sales tax. It's like a consumer tax. But the thing is, when you're selling to a different company, you need to make proof through an exemption certificate that that business is not an end consumer and you can apply for exemption. So while applying the tax is theoretically simple, you have this paper, tra paper trail that you need to keep if you have a tax tax audit, you need to prove that you're computing your taxes and applying tax exemptions properly. So it turns out that it's quite hard for people to keep compliant, for businesses to keep compliant with taxes. Uh, in the EU, we have other complications like recently, uh, uh, e-services sold between EU countries, they should apply the VAT tax at the destination country. And there's even one service called the mini one-stop shop where you should apply so that you can pay your VAT taxes depending on the countries you're selling to. So this is, this is a, supposed to be a simplification, but still, all the concept behind this is still complex. And if you have an online shop selling for several countries in the EU, this is also a headache. So um, I'm not a tax specialist, so I'm an Odoo specialist. Still, I think I, I, I could convince you that there are here a lot of challenges on uh, uh, tax compute, uh, computation for non-trivial cases where you need to sell across several countries or several states. And um, uh, this is actually very common in e-commerce e platforms. So, and that's something that we see a lot of e-commerce platforms choosing Odoo as uh, an ERP. So this is very relevant for Odoo. And what is Avalara? Avalara is a company that implemented a cloud service that promised taking care of all of this for you. So they have this cloud service called Avatax that you, basically how this works is that your software sends a request to this service with all the, rec the relevant information for taxes. What is the, um, the seller's address, the buyer's address, the shipping from address, the shipping through address, the product details. And you send all this information there and they promise you they'll compute the taxes, um, the correct taxes for you. And they also have this service of 
taking care of your tax returns or filing your tax returns or having prepared the, the correct information for your tax returns so that you don't need to worry about that. For example, in the US, there are several states. You probably need to pay your taxes in several of these states depending on what are your um, uh, commercial transactions. And Avatax and, um, uh, helps you with this. So it's a valuable service. It's a paid service, although. So that's important. So our connector here is free. It's uh, open source, free. Still, the backend service is not free. Uh, but it, it's still worth evaluating and see probably there's a good chance that the tax compliance assurance they'll give you uh, outweigh the the cost and brings value enough to outweigh the cost that the service has. So uh, a word about the Avatax Odoo connector that I'll be presenting today. So this was a module originally developed by Fabrice. Uh, uh, it's the Americas the director for Odoo and they developed it and maintained it through versions 9, 10, and 11. And at version 12, uh, they decided not to maintain it, I believe because they introduced the Tax Cloud module in the Enterprise Edition, and that is a free service in the US. It's a much simpler service, but it's free. And they decided to incorporate that in the Odoo 12 Enterprise Edition of Odoo uh, to not let down the customers that were already running this uh, module in their installations they invited partners to take uh, uh, to take to maintain the, the, the this product this um, connector and migrate it to version 12. Um, so this happened and at the later step uh, osi we decided that the the uh, oca would be a good place to host this module and we contributed the 13 version to the OCA and it's now available in the OCA. Now important, our contribution, unlike the original one, we changed the Enterprise Edition requirement. So the OCA version that we published is compatible both with the Community Edition and with the Enterprise Edition. So this is a great alternative because the official tax cloud that comes with Odoo is only for Enterprise Edition. So this is a good option for companies not running the Enterprise Edition. Uh, also worthy of note is that this module went through an official certification process with Avalara and we were awarded official certification. So this was tested and verified by Avalara engineers and it's certified as, they, as it complies all the requirements for the, uh, the um, uh, Avalara's requirements for this, the connector. <coughs> A little bit more of history, so on version 12, we did significant work here, refactoring from the old SOAP API to the newer REST API. So this had some significant effort on itself. Um, for version 12, we, were, we also struggled with significant changes in the Odoo tax engine. And on version 13, so that we wouldn't rest a lot on all the results of our efforts, uh, Odoo changed completely invoices and they were refactored as account moves. So this also meant quite some significant effort moving code from one model to the other. And on top of all this, on all these versions, the Odoo tax engine was not built to be extended. and a Valara connector has requirements that the Valara computed amount, tax amount, should be used at the cent with the precision of the cent. So we can't use the values computed by Odoo. We need need to override those values, those amounts, with the ones computed by Avalara because Avalara takes care for you of the correct uh, rounding of the tax amounts uh, and. We, it should override the ERP engine computing that. And that was not easy to achieve in Odoo because it was not built for you to be able to do that. Um, one uh, relevant link here, this is the repo where we are hosting this on account fiscal rule. So 
to be clear, initially, while this module um, was built to support the uh, sales tax, US sales tax, uh, so a good candidate might be the US localization repo. I know that Avatax supports VAT and it's an important use case for, for a lot of companies. So I decided to propose it to the account uh, fiscal rule, which is the tax related repo for, uh, the, for the OCA, because my goal is this to serve not only specifically the US, but any region where Av that Avatax supports and um, um, have the uh, OCA model su uh, also support those regions such as VAT in the EU. I know that Avalara is also working for the Brazilian market to compute taxes there. So that could be on the roadmap in the future. So there, there's a lot of other, um, um, there's a lot of interesting things for the roadmap that make this generic enough to be on the, this repo and not on the US localization. So it's time to have here a short demo of how this looks like. So I'm bringing here my terminal. So this is, I'm running right now an enterprise edition server. I'm, I'm bringing the, this window because I'll be showing you some interesting things in the, of the inner workings in this uh, terminal window. And I'm bringing here my um, running Odoo service, uh, my running Odoo. So the, the flow starts with sales orders. So we can create a sales order. And at this, at here, we select the customer, for example, open source integrators. Let me maximize this. Okay. And I see here some information on the exception numbers and codes. So this is the reason why this transaction or this customer might be exempt. Um, this, is take, this is configured and taken from the uh, customer data. So I have here the default invoicing address, delivery address, and I can add products. So such as this customizable desk. And at this point, I don't have any taxes configured here. In older versions, you would see a button saying I have a tax here. So the trigger to say this tax is not computed by Odoo, but by the Avatax service is the presence of an Avatax button here. On version 13, we changed that, and instead of being an Avatax code, the trigger to say what, uh, which amounts should be computed by Avatax, we move it to the fiscal position. So we're saying that this document is an Avatax tax mapping, and this has this special use Avatax API, meaning that the, the taxes by this document should not be computed by, um, should be automatically computed by an Avatax API call. So right now I have zero taxes here and I can use this button to force the tax computation. So now I can have a quote with the, okay, here it is. So this 5.6% with a star here, this is an automatic uh, automatically computed by the iPad tax engine. So what happened behind the scenes is a call was sent to the iPad tax cloud service. I got a response and the response told me that this document has $42 of taxes and the tax applied on this line was 5.6%. And Odoo will automatically create this tax percentage if it's not available on the system. So we have a tax template with the appropriate configuration, such as the uh, accounting, uh, the, I mean the accounts to be used, and it will use that as a template to create on the fly the missing tax percentages here. This was not so in the older versions of uh, the connector. We had just an Avatax button here. That the but that had a disadvantage. With 
this new approach of getting the tax percentages, I can get an estimation of what the tax amount if I change, dynamically change information in the existing sale order line or if I add a discount. So this is being done by Odoo. Uh, so Odoo is simulating the attacks I'm going to have for this sale order. I know this is not a, the final amount because Avatax must take over and Avatax must uh, is the one who should do the correct roundings. So uh, this is an estimate. Probably the final, the correct amount is uh, 120.95 or 120.97, but at least I have the salesperson has a pretty close idea of what's going to be the uh, tax amount. And he can compute taxes again, just to be sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, it updated. Okay, so I am at some point, I confirm. So I now converted this sale order into an invoice and not yet, I confirmed, I'm sorry, I confirmed the sale order. I configured this product so I don't need to deliver. I can invoice immediately before I complete the delivery. And I'm creating the new invoice. And I'll have this information um, carried over to the invoice. The, here I have the compute taxes button also, and I can post the invoice. When I confirm the sale order or when I post the invoice, there will be an automatic compute, tax recomputation just to be sure that the final AVA tax amount that's computed here is correct and that the amounts posted to your accounting books are correct. So we did uh, another click on that button, also did a click on the compute taxes for you. So you now have here the um, all the accounting lines. And if you visit the Avatax cloud, there's uh, on the administration console on the Avatax cloud, you can see the document stored there. And that's the information they use uh, for you to be able to uh, fill in your tax returns. Uh, on the so and on the back end, so I enabled here a log that's actually a requirement for certification. You need to be able to store a detailed log of the transactions. This can be uh, useful for troubleshooting problems, and you can see what's happening here. So this is the server log from Modu, and you can see here that I have a, this is a response. I have the request a bit up here. So this is the request for the transaction for this invoice and commit through means that this transaction is going to be committed, meaning it will be permanently stored in the Avatax service. That means also that it will be used for the tax reports. And I'm sending all the relevant information for this uh, invoice, the ship from, the ship to, um, the uh, so those are the addresses, the all the lines with all the details and the items. Some items might be taxable or not on some ju jurisdictions. So there are item codes that you can assign to the products on the master on master product master data that will help Avatax know if that what kind of taxation that product has in that jurisdiction. So I'm just here just encoding all the details I have on the sale order or in this case on the invoice. And then I have the response from the Avatax service. So since this is quite a long message, it brings me back all the details, including the longitude and, and latitude of the addresses. This is used to accurately find what the jurisdictions that should apply. And it also gives me a breakdown of the taxes. So in the US, that 5.6 you, you saw there, 
It's really a composition of state taxes and city taxes and county taxes. So the Maricopa County uh, adds, gets here a rate of actually zero. It doesn't charge you anything. It's not the same for all counties. And the Arizona's state tax is uh, is uh, there should be a tax here, tax percentage rate. 0 0.056. So there's a composition of several uh, taxes here. So this gives you a lot of detail, perhaps too much detail. You do have at the end here a summary of the total tax that should be applied including the total amount roundings because this there may be specific regulations on how you should round the uh, total amounts and the total uh, tax to present. So you have all these details in your server log. Uh, Avatax also handles credit notes because credit notes, uh, if, if um, you issue a credit note for on January for a December invoice and the tax rate change on the 1st of January, the credit note should still carry the tax that was valid on December when the original invoice was issued. And that's also handled by the service. It's something that was tested on this service and it's working properly. So we can, uh, when you send the credit note tax computation information for AvaTax, it knows the reference date must be the December invoice date, and it even knows what is the original invoice this tax corresponds to, and it can it also stores the reason you need to type a reason for the return, I mean for the credit note, and it stores us information there so that for tax audit purposes you can explain why this credit note was issued. Okay, so this is basically the workflow. There's a few configurations here. Let me, all the configuration needed is explained in the module readme. Uh, let me just present you with uh, two uh, main um, configuration items. So on the invoicing or accounting menu on the configuration, you'll see here some avatar specific uh, configurations. This one is where you configure the actual connection. This is multi-company compatible. And so you enter here your connection details and you can enable or disable like there's also an address validation. This is recommended to be used to be sure that you're selecting the right jurisdictions, but it's optional at your own risk. So there's quite some options here uh, that, that you uh, have available. And on the configuration side, I can show you the taxes. You have this AVA tax default tax. It's really a template. It's not used for anything, but you can add your um, accounting configuration here and this will be used as a template to create the actual rates when you compute taxes and new rates are found and dynamically created in the system. Okay, so this is copied over from the Abba tax. Okay, enough for the demonstration. Um, let me go next to my next slide. So I just just in case as a backup, I, I added some some screenshots here to my um, presentation. And finally, this is my last slide for the roadmap. So this is my roadmap for the uh, for the module, and I'll plan to work on them as time permits, as and as customers require it. But contributions are welcome. First thing on my list is to add the VAT support and get certification for a VAT cal calculation. I'm, I'm guessing from the requirements list, this is not very far away. Uh, the additional requirement uh, to the sales tax certification we already have is to make sure that it works for, for tax included prices. I just need to run these tests, make sure that it works as expected in this case, and we'll go through that certification. If things go for the best, this will be simple to do. It's just some time to run these tests. With a bit of luck, I won't even need to add significant fixes to the, to the existing module. 
Another thing is to add an e-commerce extension so that it properly integrates with the checkout side, uh, the, the, the checkout of the e-commerce module for Odoo. So this is something that's not available. I'm remembering same thing for POS uh, so that you have a button to compute taxes on the POS and can do that for you. Uh, of course, documentation could need some love. It's a bit basic and uh, some examples, some additional clarifications could be interesting. And right now, Odoo 14 is out and this will be for sure on, needs to be on the roadmap. It's to migrate it to version 14 and apply again for the version 14 ver uh, certification. Finally, I'm aware that Avatax service has a free layer. I'm not sure exact the limitations, but I know it exists. So adding this support for the free layer of Avatax would be a great inclusion for the OCA module. I'm sure that a lot of business could get started with this one and upgrade to the uh, paid service if they feel that there's significant benefit on the additional service provided by Avalara. Um, and that's my presentation. So I, I, I hope you liked it and I'm open for questions. Fantastic, Daniel. I, I, there's just no way you can convey in 30 minutes. I mean, it's amazing what you showed in terms of tax complexity, but these, these folks will never get a sense of how unbelievable the development work was that you did to make this work. So I'm very very grateful to have watched it as a participant today and also to have seen your excellence. We've invited everybody in both into a Discord and also the Q&A uh, of this, the Zoom and also the chat field to please ask questions, but we don't have any uh, questions. So is there anything else you, you kind of have thought of, Daniel, as you've gone through and said, oh, I, I wish I had mentioned that earlier in the presentation or it was very comprehensive. You're, you're, it doesn't seem like you've missed anything, but sometimes <laughs> there's three speeches. There's the one you think you're going to give, the one you actually everybody hears, and afterwards you go, oh, I should have said that. So anything else you, you wish you'd said? Uh, not that I remember now, but there are these, these topics. Here. So I remember last minute the POS integration could, would be missing here. Uh, actually, I had that question from earlier presentations, and it's something that's really interesting. So one thing I can add is that some people ask me, why is not automatic? So when I press the save button, why doesn't it automatically run? Or even better, why when I'm adding a line on the sales order, why doesn't it automatic refresh? And the short answer is that because that would overload Avalara service. So this mm -hmm. is online and they need to have a really uh, a system that needs to scale a lot. There's, it handles a huge amount of transactions and during their certification process, they really look very closely how many calls your service is, your implement connector is making to their service. And they ask you to try to keep those to the minimum possible. So they count them and they ask you to keep to the minimum possible. So in our case, the minimum flow from sale order to invoice right now, it's I think it's four calls. I think it's between two and four calls, which is under their 10 threshold for the full cycle. Um, so we can't make that automatic on the save button because it wouldn't go through the cert, it wouldn't pass the certification process. That's a technical detail I would add. And here, the roadmap here is really the big thing because I'm really uh, um, happy to have contributed this to the OCA. And I hope that other people discover this and find it useful and jump in and help and we make this better for everyone, a better connector for everyone. <laughs> Excellent. And, and that is a good point. It's easier for the users to just click on the save and let it call to the database in Avalara than try to overwhelm their servers with just constant API calls going back and yes. forth that are unnecessary for updating the sales order in Odoo. So again, another example of how you had a, a very kind of a constraint in the development that you had to, mm -hmm. you went way below that. Or they, you were allowed 10 API calls and you only did it in four. So another compliment there. I think that's it, Daniel.